In a South London street, a man with bloodied hands, carrying a knife and machete, approaches a camera and tries to justify what has just happened. I apologise that women had to witness this today, but in our land, our women have to see the same. You people will never be safe. Remove your government, they don't care about you. He then walks back up the road, back towards the victim of this attack who lies prone in the street. Islamic terrorism is a real and serious problem, but the public is not aware of a much bigger problem in our political establishment. The much bigger problem is that Islamic terrorism exists in the West on purpose, and by design, as a political tool courtesy of the New World Order. The Vatican declared secular humanism evil to be done away with, and thus by implication, Western secular democratic governments, where freedom of religion is considered a basic human right. The Vatican's use of Islam to accomplish this disposal dates back to the Vatican's extermination of the Bogomils from the Middle Ages. The Vatican is using a very old playbook, and it is precisely the one Walid Schubert is being paid to hide. In this video you will be shown undeniable proof that Walid Schubert is not telling anyone about Islamic terrorism, he is actually hiding it, with his fraudulent homeland security song and dance, in which as an actor, he plays the part of a former PLO terrorist, who, as you saw previously, actually never was. From this video series, you saw that the use of terrorism as a political and financial weapon, had its roots in the Roman Reich. And you saw that all modern terrorism can be traced back historically to the Nazis and their terrorist training camp in Brandenburg, Germany, as part of their efforts to re-establish Hitler's Third Reich, also known as the New World Order, or the restoration of the Pope's Holy Roman Empire. You also saw how modern terrorism is traced to the IRA who were collaborators with the Nazis prior to World War II, who trained at Brandenburg, and who've exported their expertise to the Middle East along with Nazi anti-Semitic propaganda broadcast from radios Isin, in Arabic, Persian and Egyptian to Muslims. 
and that now as a part of re-establishing Hitler's new world order, terrorism is being sponsored across the globe in order to destabilize secular democratic governments, through financing from the Vatican. In part 2, you saw how disinformationists such as Alex Jones and Wallet Schubert are used to keep knowledge of who is really behind the spread and use of terrorism in modern societies concealed from the public through intentional disinformation. And in part 3, you saw how Wallet Schubert's counter-reformationist claim that the Muslim Mahdi is the Antichrist, is contradicted by the plain facts of the texts of scripture. In this video, you will see how the Jesuits have been training people to go so far as to actually infiltrate other religions and take them over. And the footprints of the Jesuits can be traced through every major terrorist operation in the world, including even to the disinformationists such as Alex Jones and Walid Schubert, that they used to conceal what they have been doing. Many of these militant organizations, uh, I train and prepare how they can become Baptists, how they can become Adventists, how they can become uh, 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 Methodists, how they can become Presbyterian, how they can become Pentecostal, and all these areas where they must infiltrate any area. In every country, uh, the Roman Catholic system display this promotion uh, uh, to the uh, so-called Virgin that they display to different militant organizations the promotional need for certain saint or virgin or whatever. The Opus Dei is another arm of the Jesuits, but that means you have Masons, uh, you have uh, Illuminatis, okay. you have uh, uh, the uh, you have the New Age movement. Uh, uh, you have um, uh, the Trilateral Commission, you have the Club of Rome, uh, uh, you have uh, so many others. There are in different areas working uh, 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 through certain programs what they need in that particular area uh, where these organizations move, these, uh, where there are secret or public organizations. They need to control certain area of certain uh, people, and, and this is where and how they'll be ready to have them under control. The, well, the Council of Trent was the first council to be managed by the Jesuit order. The Vatican Council was brought about by the same Jesuit order with the same intention. And you know the intention of the Council of Trent. The intention behind the Council of Trent was the Counter-Reformation. What was the intent of the Vatican Council II? Another Counter-Reformation, but called today, how you call it? Renewal. You see the point? Now, the change wasn't made, but the intentions were the same. Yeah. See, more sophisticated today. Yeah. You see, the Counter-Reformation was taken through the, through the Council of Trent. That was the entire counter-reformation was uh, performed by the Council of Trent decrees. 
then through that time until today, Vatican Council II came about with the idea of renewal. That means another a step forward and the final, I will say this, is the final stage of a counter-reformation. has been brought back in the last 42 years, um, the last two popes. Uh, so there's no question the position is back. There's a real link in, in the politics with that. Um, I point out, for example, under Reagan, the CIA linked up with Pope John Paul II and they attacked together, they attacked liberation theology based in East and Latin America. And it really destroyed that whole movement, uh, as, 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 as it was anyway, and replaced it with Opus Dei, meaning liberation, all of which are extreme right-wing groups. Um, Havana was broadcasting it. It was in the, every newspaper in the land. All our enemies knew it, and you wanted to conceal it from the United States Congress. CIA to finally acknowledge its responsibility. The tape was shot from a CIA plane on assignment in Peru to target drug planes, send in Peruvian Air Force jets to shoot them down. The plane was not carrying drugs, but instead 
a Christian missionary family from Michigan, the Bowers. And this tape clearly shows the CIA's officers and pilots suspected that the Bowers plane did not fit the profile of a drug plane. Okay. It did not stop the Peruvian jet fighters. Yeah, I think we should. <laughs> hey, Aider? Yes, sí. he's going to Santa Clara. Aproximadamente 37 millas de Quito. The plane is talking to a Quito story. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. okay.
many of the kamikaze flyers were young students. Many of them had been mobilized in late 1943 and free to form the very first elite suicide unit. The new unit is called the Shimpu Tokatai, or Divine Wind Special Attack Corps. Shimpu is a more formal way to pronounce the two characters that spell kamikaze. Pilots volunteer by the hundreds and begin to undergo rigorous training. Each day began with the singing of the Japanese national anthem. Then, trainees would recite the Imperial Oath first given by Emperor Meiji to the Army and Navy in 1882. He would receive a lunch of polished white rice, which by this time, late in the war, was quite a delicacy in Japan. Yet he thought to himself, why am I eating this? What's the point? I'm going to be dead soon. The pilot would say goodbye to his companions the night before and distribute among them his meager possessions and what money he had, carrying with him only a few charms. The Japanese kamikaze pilots would probably carry several charms or talisman. Normally they'd have a headband pronouncing certain victory or sure to kill the Americans. Uh, they might have a flag inscribed with the names of other members of their units wishing them success on their mission and possibly some would have a thousand stitch belt. This was what amounted to a belly band and each stitch was collected by a mother, a girlfriend, a wife on street corners of cities or towns. They asked individuals to add one stitch, one stitch at a time so that the thousand stitches would bring the wearer good luck and good fortune in this world and in the next. But the Japanese were not the only nation to create a suicide corps during World War II. Halfway around the globe, its Axis ally had the same idea, secretly building a little-known squadron in one of the most covert missions of the war, German kamikaze attacks. The ancient Teutonic Knights. The sign on their shields was the Black Cross, the same Black Cross carried on the wings of Hitler's Luftwaffe. Certainly the Teutonic Knights mythology, not the actual history, was very important to the Nazis. Part of it is because they liked the symbolism, knighthood, they were very big on vows, blood loyalty, and the idea of fighting an enemy from the East. The Teutonic Knights were founded in Palestine in the year 1190 by German Knights who had gone to fight in the Crusades. In 1309, the Teutonic Knights were invited to Prussia on the borders of Eastern Europe to help protect Christian missionaries from the infidels who occupied the vast Russian steppes. The Teutonic Knights were certainly Germany's uh, border guards. The Teutonic Knights are, however, explicitly religious. They are then monks, and they're a fighting order. They were certainly very important in the German settling of what now is Eastern Germany, as well as uh, Prussia. For centuries, the order of the Teutonic Knights defended Germany from its Russian and Slavic enemies. Their code, was to die in battle rather than surrender. 
Centuries later, the story of the Teutonic Knights would also catch the imagination of the son of a Catholic schoolmaster. His name was Heinrich Himmler. He would create his own version of the legendary order. It was called the SS. Trade Center site. It's two blocks away. But despite those comments, the controversial imam and organization sponsoring the center remained silent. So why are they not speaking out more? Joining me now with some insight is former PLO militant Walid Shubat. They display to different militant organizations the promotional need for certain sane or virgin or whatever. Good morning to you, Mr. Shubat. Good morning. Why do you think that this imam, Abdul Rauf, why is he not speaking out more? Well, of course, he's going to have to plead the fifth when he speaks to the American people because he's going to have to answer as to uh, does he support Hamas, does he denounce Hamas. she's going as an envoy to the Middle East and if he denounces Hamas in front of the American people he's going to be questioned in the Middle East because in the Middle East there's a high support of Hamas if you was elected 73.2 percent of the Middle East wanted Hamas in fact his support of Hamas uh, Hezbollah uh, the Islamic Jihad movement has been expressed by him in the Arabic language. Manifesto has been uh, expressed by uh, in Al Ghad newspaper, in Hadil Islam.com, right. in several news media. In fact, 
Americans should listen to this. He says that the trend towards Islamic law and justice begins by religious movements like Hamas, Hezbollah, the Islamic resistance. This is a straight support for terrorism. And I want to bring in what he said after 9-11, because this is important for Americans as well. This was in 2001. I wouldn't say that the United States deserved what happened, but United States policies were an accessory to the crime that happened. That Absolutely. sounds controversial to me. Very much. In, in his book, in the, Arab, in the Arabic language, the title of his book is A Call to Dawah from the World Trade Center Rubble. This should be very alarming. Da'wah is the process of Islamization. And he also talked in his manifesto on his goals in the Middle East. Now he's being sent as an envoy. He, they talked about how they're going to fix the low class systems in the Middle East. That secularism is not the answer. His, in fact, he made it very explicit and he stated that he wants to establish uh, an Islamic state uh, mm -hmm. as the but model of, uh, in Arabia. Let me ask you this, Mr. Shubat, because one of the interesting comments in your notes to me was that you also believe that he has not had to come forward and explain any of this because he has the president behind him speaking for him. That's right. Who, I mean, how, how much does, more does he want? He's got the president of the most powerful country in the world speaking for him. speaking for him, why should he appear on Fox News or CNN to respond to the questions of his support to the terrorist organizations?
life has often protested that his plans for conquest do not extend across the Atlantic Ocean, but his submarines and radars prove otherwise. And so does the entire design of his new world order. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order. Now, the only chance we have as a country right now is for Osama bin Laden to, de to deploy and, de and detonate a major weapon in the United States. We need to kill the Muslims. That's what we need to do. We need a World War 3 now. We can't stop on number 2. Please let's kill the Muslims. They do want to all kill you. So let's just kill some Muslims. It's what Hitler wants you to do. They'll quote the women in Burton. They'll demand Sharia law. The only way you can survive is answer the people call. Give him all your countries. Turn over all your rights. Let him have his inquisitions. He'll free you from this plight. Of course he's the one behind it, but the doesn't matter nearly as much as getting rid of Muslims who are out to steal your lunch. The way out of this dilemma is to capitulate your life, offer it to the papacy, and he'll make everything all right. except me. You humbug! Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's exactly so. I'm a humbug. Oh, you're a very bad man. Playbook today, using Islamic terrorists against twist and secular democratic governments, is a thousand years old and contains all the same strategies and tactics that have been used in Europe long ago, in its extermination of the Bogomils of Central Europe. The Vatican attacked the Bogomils from the West, using crusaders that it whipped up into a frenzy, just as it is doing today. And the Vatican then consorted with the Islamic Caliphate to squeeze them from the East. Despite the fact the Bogomils had been friends with the Muslim people and sympathetic toward its religious ideals of monotheism and its prophet Muhammad. Who were the Bogomils? You will be quite surprised. In the next video the identity of the Bogomils will be examined, and how their extermination is now serving as the model for the Vatican's strategy in crumbling modern Western democracy. The Bogomils were not who, they are now telling everyone they were in their revisionist New World Order history being spread all over the internet and in publications today. In fact, the truth is very far from it, and it explains why the Vatican was so very disparate to have them exterminated. So disparate that it opened the door to Western Europe's conquest in order to get rid of them.
and it explains what is being done today behind the scenes using Islamic terrorism that Western Vatican politicians are fully in control of. It explains precisely what Wallet Schubert is hiding from Protestant Evangelical America as a counter-reformation infiltrator and disinformationist.